Being able to convert between signal strength and binary is pretty useful in redstone. The only problem? While converting binary to signal strength is relatively simple, the other conversion is not very simple. Without hard coding all the answers or priming the comparators beforehand, there doesn't seem to be any viable way to get past this two redstone tick delay between every single bit. And the worst part about this is that yeah, guess which parts you have to do more often. It's the complicated one. But what if I told you there's an easier way where you can have a one redstone tick delay between bits. Space them right next to each other. Maybe even do it vertically. And all with just a small fraction of the logic. All while the other conversion is still about the same. Well, guess what? You can. All we have to do is think slightly outside the box and ditch weighted binary in favor of gray code. When you think of binary, you're probably used to weighted binary. This is where each position has a specific weight to it, and you simply add up all the weights of every position that has a 1. This makes it very ideal for applications such as arithmetic, and it's also nice because each number gets a unique encoding. But it's not the only way to encode numbers in binary. There's over 20 trillion other systems that also give each number a unique encoding. And that's just with four bits. Now, most of them aren't very good, but it's enough that it's impossible for weighted binary to always win. Gray code is one such alternative encoding whose flagship feature is that only one bit changes at a time whenever you count, no matter how far along you are. In the most common form, this bit is always the lowest one that can be changed without returning to a previously visited bit sequence, which happens to also always be the most significant bit that would be toggled for weighted binary. Because of this relationship between the two, you can even convert between the two fairly easily using a series of XOR gates. And this directly means that both systems are fully capable of representing all the same numbers, just in different ways. Now this is not the first time that I've used gray code on this channel, and I'm honestly surprised it doesn't have more of a presence in the redstone community as it has many powerful features in computer science. But today, we'll be looking at a particularly notable use of gray code, as it links back to its namesake. In real life, gray code became famous by Frank Gray when he invented an analog to digital device which uses the encoding to minimize errors. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with such problems in Minecraft anyways, as all of the signal strengths and ticks come in discrete intervals. But it still turns out to be an excellent choice, as the type of symmetry it has makes the process much simpler. Here we have the two systems in a more condensed fashion, so we can see the types of symmetry they have. For weighted binary, the lower bits simply repeat. This is reflected in how we reduce the signal strength by one bit. After the reduction, it'll either be the same value we started with, or said value, but with a power of 2 subtracted off. And of course, which one we go with is based on that first bit. And so this results in what's called a conditional subtract, where we subtract off a number, but only if x is at least that number. And trying to do this in any less than two layers of comparators quickly proves impossible, as we need to both test if it's above a certain point, and then reduce the signal if it is. And yeah, that's uh, not particularly easy in a single layer of comparators. Well, unless you dig into comparator priority stuff, but that only applies on Java Edition, and it only properly works with a boosted signal strength anyways. Now let's look at gray code. This one also has a lot of symmetry, but this time, it's mirror symmetry. This means that to reduce it by one bit, we have to select between x and 15 minus x. Specifically, we'll take x if it's less than 8, and 15 minus x if it's at least 8. But here's where things start to get spicy. If we look a little closer, we'll notice that whenever x is below 8, x is the smaller of the two values. Meanwhile, when x is at least 8, 
15 minus x is the smaller of the two values. And this means that in either case, the number we want is always the smaller one. So this can easily be defined using just the minimum function. However, this in and of itself isn't very helpful. The minimum function isn't particularly easy to implement in signal strength. But its brother function, maximum, is literally the easiest way to combine two signal strengths together. You just power the same spot. And with a little bit of manipulation, we can actually implement both of these functions using the other. But it gets even better. You see how after calculating the max, we subtract it from 7. Well, we don't actually have to do that. Remember how gray code has this mirror symmetry going on? Well, this means that if we don't subtract it from 7, all that happens is this next bit gets inverted. And so we end up with a function that is very easy to implement in signal strength. All we have to do is subtract off a certain value, then subtract from a certain value in parallel, and then of course take the larger of the two values. And that's it. That's an entire one bit reduction for gray code. So while weighted binary has to go through at least two redstone takes of delay to implement a conditional subtract, gray code gets to take the fast lane with this sort of folding operation. And plus, this is able to geometrically chain right back into itself very smoothly. But it gets even better. With conditional subtraction, we're preserving the low values while bringing the high values down. And this ends up meaning that if we needed to output a higher signal strength in order to account for something else going on, we have no choice but to make it yet another step. But with folding, the lower values get mirrored instead, and the value we subtract from isn't restricted to values within the input range. And so by adjusting the parameters, we can just implicitly bring the low values back up, and still while going through just one layer of comparators. The only restrictions here are that we can't subtract from higher than 15, well, at least without using overloaded signal strength, but more notably, the maximum value cannot increase, which again is a much more lenient restriction than conditional subtracts not allowing the minimum to increase. So not only is folding faster, it also gives us a large amount of freedom on what ranges we use to encode our numbers. But hold on, so far we've only done the reductions. We still need to test each part to see if it's above the threshold for the given bit. And normally we would just subtract some value and see if the output is still non-zero. But we don't have space for more comparators here. But we do already have a comparator that's subtracting off a value. And we can adjust the ranges arbitrarily. And so if we just adjust all of those output ranges just right, so that they all start at 1, then yeah, these blocks end up giving us the result. Of course, if we want it to be in the proper form, we do still theoretically need to invert these lower bits to account for you know, them being inverted from before. But, I mean, this is only necessary if you actually need signal strength 0 to represent all zeros. But if you just skip the inversion, then we still have converted the signal strength to some form of binary. Every signal strength has a unique sequence of bits, and every sequence of bits has a unique signal strength. And you can get the result in as little as just three redstone ticks, all in a fraction of the space that it would take to do weighted binary. And in fact, it's actually so fast, it's about the same speed as if we simply hard-coded the values. Of course, if you're using signal strength to hold multiple bits, you'll need to convert the other way first. And the good news is, this process is also fairly simple for gray code. And also looks strangely familiar. Except this time, the bits are going in the opposite order. So here we have the highest bit, and here we have the lowest bit. We're also using this part to unfold instead of fold this time. And this is because now uh, this part uh, is much higher than the input, so if it's allowed to let its signal through, then it will mirror it up to the higher value, otherwise it'll just pass through unchanged. 
this does still end up being slightly less ideal than for weighted binary, as with here, it's a little more compact, and you can provide the bits in any order that you want. But, I mean, the difference here is just absolutely nothing compared to the other conversion. So, on average, it's almost always more compact. So, especially if the goal is to store multiple bits in one signal, there's really no reason to use weighted binary. It's simply more work for the same result. Now, here we are in the world download, just to go over a couple examples on how you can pair these things together in terms of what gets inverted and what doesn't. Uh, first, we have the variant where converting two signal strengths is as simple as possible. And then next, we have the variant where signal strength zero represents all zeros, so it's the proper form, if you want to call it that. And then next, my favorite, the one where unpacking the bits is as simple as possible. Of course, in each of these, the bits aren't exactly in sync with each other, particularly because the two conversions have the bits in opposite orders. But here we have one that not only lines them up uh, in time, but also physically lines them up. As a bonus, because we can easily boost the signal strength at each step, this also makes it fairly easy to lay it out vertically. And again, all of these end up being a lot more compact and much faster than weighted binary. And on Java Edition, we can even do this with overloaded signal strength. So here, we take a value of 897 and convert it all the way to gray code. And then here we have another version that just uses slightly less logic and, you know, and just doesn't invert them correctly. And both of these take about just 20 redstone ticks, which is pretty good for not being able to use redstone dust for the majority of a 10-bit conversion. But quite possibly the wildest part about all of this is that signal strength to gray code is so fast that converting to weighted binary can actually go faster if you go through gray code first. At first glance, this seems absolutely impossible. We have to go through this massive XOR chain to convert gray code to weighted binary. But if we look a little closer, we'll notice that the XOR chain requires the bits in the exact same order that our folding chain produces them. And if we're really careful with our signal strengths, we can chain together multiple XOR gates without having to amplify the signal in between, which ultimately means that it's able to go at the same speed as the folding chain. And of course, you know, as just mentioned, this does make it signal strength dependent. Fortunately, simply using a compare mode comparator and powering the side of it makes it pretty easy to set the signal strength to one of two possible values, either on or off. Of course, this does invert the signal, but I mean, most of our outputs need to be inverted anyways. Putting it all together, we get, um, well, it's a bit of a mess. Doesn't really help that I built this a long time ago and never really updated it. But I mean, mess or not, from powering this first spot uh, to the raw output, we have one, two, three, four, five redstone ticks of delay, which is one redstone tick faster than if we did three conditional subtracts. Though, um, obviously, this solution is a lot bulkier. So you're probably better off doing it directly, or at least waiting until someone else comes up with a better design. Or of course, as mentioned multiple times before, in the vast majority of cases, just switch to gray code. Remember, most of the times where you think you need weighted binary, gray code will work just fine. In fact, in many cases, it'll work even better as it has built-in protection against ghost signals when adjusting the number by one at a time. Now lastly, I'll just briefly touch on building it, or really that just means getting the signal strengths correct or adjusting them. There's also a world download in the description for both editions in case you want to check it out. We'll start with converting from signal strength as that's the cooler, more interesting one. And to do this, uh, at least where we want this block to give us the bit, we need to subtract from a power of two 
specifically half of the input range, and then subtract by one less than that. So in this case, yeah, it's eight and seven. The rest are kind of inverted from that. So instead we subtract by a power of two, like so, and we subtract from uh, one more than that. And um, I'm mainly presenting it to you that way because that extends to fewer bits or overloaded signal strength. But again, for this version, uh, this side is seven, four, two, and then eight, five, and three. Now onto the elusive, how do you adjust the ranges? Well, uh, to adjust the output range, you adjust the subtract from value in the same direction you want it to change, and the subtract by value in the opposite direction. So right now, you know, we're going zero to seven to zero to three. And so if we wanted to increase it, uh, we would adjust this one up and this one down. And then the input range is a little easier. You just adjust both of them in the same direction. So if we wanted to account for this part being higher, then we would bring this one up and this one also up. And yeah, you'll notice that that is the exact values that we got before for the uh, second reduction is subtract by four, subtract from five. Converting gray code to signal strength, each one of these is just one less than a power of two. So one, three, seven, and 15. And yeah, not a whole lot of freedom here. So that's all there really is. Uh, I guess you can mirror the entire signal instead of inverting the top bit. And finally, for the vertical converter, these values are kind of all over the place. For each of them, the subtract by value is zero, as we want the output to be as high as possible to account for the decay. But we do have a second value for the threshold instead. I mean, theoretically, you could also use this one, but you would just need another comparator again anyways. So anyways, for the reduction, the subtract by values are 14, 15, and 13, while the values for the thresholds are uh, 8, 7, 6, and very unsatisfyingly 4. And also note that in this case, we're using compare mode just so that we get a higher output. And also, uh, you can build this upside down and it'll work just fine. Anyways, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for listening to me nerd out about gray code, in case it's not obvious. I love this encoding, and I hope you learned something useful. Again, world download with all these things can be found in the uh, description. And as always, if you like the video, be sure to support trans rights.